Right lads, welcome back to my team career mode. We have the Singapore Grand Prix today. Um, in terms of the standings, Verstappen is closing up. Both Red Bulls are closing up on Bottas, Hamilton's Naywar, I'm going to be perfectly honest. Um, and we are about 30-something uh, points doing on the championship lead. 30 Seafin or something like that. Um, we started last, last episode with engine changes that we finished fifth. It's not the win for the last we had in season one and season two, but fifth place is still good. If there was a safety car, I would have won that race. Because that's what really helped us, helped us out in season two was the 12 safety cars we had. Um, in that one. But either way, there's not really much to do in pre before the race here, you know, because we've maxed out, out our car. Um, so there isn't really much to do, really. Uh, we do have a marketing department event, um, about launching a new range of uh, merchandise, and it turns out we actually can't launch without science, um, it's about, do we launch it with him or without him, we have to launch it with him. I think it's probably because his, um, pace is so high anyway, it can't add any more, any more pace to him. I know so we have to launch it with him because his cool. pace is already maxed out. It's already at 100, I believe. I will see it just here. Yeah, he's 100 rated. His pace is maxed out at 100. Um, so we'll have to see. Well, th well, that should bode well for the rest of the season. Hopefully he gets some good luck and does okay. Um, in terms of next season, I am looking at the Red Bull boys. Very specifically Verstappen. I want to try and get Verstappen next season, maybe? I don't know. But that's some kind of... I'm looking in that kind of ballpark area. I don't know, maybe see if I can maybe try and um, get the freaking driver market a bit more in action. But our spec 3 on the durability finally came in, which means we can finally, finally delve into these... Upgrade into these more um, ultimate upgrades. Just one more left. Our department capacity is unfortunately reached. Uh, Ferrari actually has the best durability, um, which I did not know that. They're the best durability department. So, scoot on them. Um, but we go through the timeline to heading on towards the Grand Prix. Now, as I said, no much to do because we only have those durability upgrades to do, and then we are fully 100% max do on this car. And the durability doesn't add any performance. It's just, Prevents failures in a way. And speaking of failures, that was beautifully timed commentary, wasn't it? Um, one of our parts, our, IC our ICE fail failure failed, ironically enough, but it also means now we can get our other turbo ultimate upgrade done as well. So we will be maxed out on all of our stuff as soon as that comes in. And as we head on to the weekend, Alfa Romeo continuing to make massive strides forward. Haas, I'm, I, what is going on with Haas, honestly? Why haven't they upgraded? Um, but again, top five, all max out. Um, Alfa Terry closing up, no upgrades from Alpine or Williams or Haas, but mind you, Haas. I'm genuinely curious what is going on with Haas. What is going on with them? They have not upgraded all season. There is, I plan on doing a video trying to max out the Haas car and driver career. Um, that video's coming later this week, by the way. Um, so, I'll see then what the max do a has is, because there's no why that's it. But, um, so for practice, I changed out some components, and then forgot to change them back before heading into qualifying. My IC, my, uh, my ICE and MGUK, I changed them out for practice, and forgot to change them back for qualifying. So, we're going to be a bit against it here at the end of the session to set a lap time. We have time for literally one timed lap. Um, and I think the Ferrari is literally one of the only ones. There's still people in the pay lane, of course. Some of the more people up at the top. There's all people on the track as well, of course. Um, as we fire our way around this circuit. Through now, over the Anderson Bridge towards the hairpin. Where it is a good overtaking opportunity for a close enough heading over that bridge. Heading into the break and doing send it doing the inside there. Um, but there is rain on the way for this qualifying session. You can see it starting to streak down. The rain is starting to fall. So this could make a qualifying rather interesting as we fling it through the final corner. And now across the line to finish our lap. And we do, in the end, just about make it through into Q2. Thankfully. Well, through, we're through by about seven tenths of a second. So it's hardly barely through. But here, right at the beginning of Q2, it is raining. 
tw small twitch of the rear end there and the small terrain on the screen show it, but it's still slick conditions. And by the way, Carlos is still in the fucking pit lane. So there's still some people in the pit lane that they've headed out. They might have to come out. If anyone's still in the pit lane, surely is not going to be in a good position to make it through. There could be some big names going out in Q2 here. We should hope, I'm hoping we make it through. Uh, because we've gone out right at the beginning of the session. It's still slick conditions, even though we're going a bit deep there. Gasly going quickest with a 41.6. He is flying right now. It's under the bridge through sector 3. What's that turn? 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. Yeah. Um, turn um, 20 here and then going to 21. I know my corner numbers are Singapore. I think I've got this right. Now flinging it through the final two corners now. This is going to be a lap time as we cross the line of a 143.9. And that is enough to see us through into Q2. Gasly's quickest on the medium tires as well. Gasly, Bottas and Verstappen all qualify qualifying on the mediums. Um, we've got George Russell into Q3 on in the Alfa Romeo. He was there at the beginning of the session, but look at this. There's some big names heading out in Q2. Sergio Perez tried on the mediums, couldn't make it through. Lewis Hamilton stayed in the garage too long, as did S Carlos Sainz, our teammate, and Leclerc, who all, they all had to go out on the intermediate tires, and they couldn't make it through. So big names out in Q2, our teammate being one of them. Um, and the other, one of the championship contenders being another one. And the third being a driver that I fully intend to sign at some point in this career mode. Um, but we're on our first lap here in Q3. It's not a great lap, not a great lap by any standards. Um, but just get a banker in, you know, because get gain a bit of confidence in driving in these conditions. Because wet Singapore, I refer you to this My Team F1 2020 Season 3 on the last game, but we went P3 there, it was P2, a better lap than I thought it was, we're down to P7, this is where it counts, everyone's out on the track, can we qualify any higher than P7, as we understeer a bit through the first corner, commit to the corner cut, um, don't worry, no invalidation, I'm known for cutting corners anyway on this game, um, but that means we're 7 tenths up on our best, here as we head on now, out of turn 5, small cloud to the barrier, no DRS of course because it's raining. Um, so we go now down towards turn 7, we're purple through the first sector. Heading on now off the track a little bit, back on in plenty of time and to break normally for the next right hander I nearly said left, 1.1 up on our best. Max Verstappen has gone even quicker than he did before with a 149.1. Um, the checkered flag is going to fall in just a few seconds time and through the old Singapore sling we go. We're down to P8 as so the checkered flag has fallen. Taking a few liberties riding the curb a lot there. As we head over the bridge towards the hairpin. 1.5 up on our previous best effort. Small lockup as we may try and make it through the corner and get back on power as early as we possibly can. Of course this would be a DRS right in the dry. It's not in the wet. And purple in the second sector as well. We are absolutely flying. This cannot happen. There's no way. As we head on through Sector 3, getting this corner a lot better than we did on our first run. As we head on now down the bridge, the, under the, to the bridge section now. Easy to get it wrong here. Easy to get it right as well. It's one of those places that can be a little bit touchy. Very single file road here. Um, but now, after this one, just two quarters, remember, we've gained 2.3 seconds on our previous best effort through the penultimate and final corner. We're we run very wide. We commit to it. We've crossed the line, hit the wall. I think that's pole position. It is a pole position for the Singapore Grand Prix. How the fuck have we done that? How the fuck have I managed? Okay, I, I'm going to be honest. I did this qualifying session a couple days ago. To this, right, to this moment, I have got absolutely no idea how I finessed my way to pole. Okay, a few liberties of track limits at turn one and there, at uh, turn two rather, and there at the, at the end, I carried too much speed in at the end, into the, like, those final two corners, and I just committed. I was like, you know what, carry the speed, commit, cross the line, I cross the line sideways, but it is pole position. Alongside Max Verstappen on the front row, starting on the mediums, Bottas mind also on the mediums, and with Gasly also on the mediums, then Stroll, the two McLarens, then Alonso, Russell, and Giovinazzi. Um, we're starting on the soft tyres 
The race will be fully dry, so it's gonna be a two-stall, but we're starting from pole position for the Singapore Grand Prix, so unexpected. Let's see what we can do from there. Here we go then, it's Formula One in Marina Bay once again, and welcome to all of you at home who join us today for this fascinating race around the baking hot, horribly humid, but very beautiful streets of Singapore. The Marina Bay Street Circuit then has 23 corners, 13 to the left and 10 to the right, taking us a total of 3.1 miles around the landmarks of downtown Singapore. An average lap speed around here, just 107 miles per hour. And I'm joined once again by Anthony Davidson to bring you the lowdown for today's race. Let's have a chat about McLaren. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. It's the owner driver in pole position then, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Gasly, Lance Stroll and Ricardo, Norris, Fernando Alonso, Russell and Antonio Giovinazzi, Perez, Hamilton, Carlos Sainz and Leclerc, Sonoda, Ocon and Guan Yu Zhou and Robert Schwartzman. Eilert, Latifi, Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. We're still in with the chance of winning the title. We need you to push as hard as you can in the five remaining races. Jeff, that's kind of the point. Second ever pole position in my team career mode. Let's fucking go. But, as I said, it will be a 12-stop strategy for us. Um, kind of going between maybe going on to the softs at the end of the race. It depends. I might go to the medium for the th for the set for the third stint. Might go to the softs. It depends on what the likes of Verstappen and Bottas are doing. Are they doing a one stop or a two stop? I have got absolutely no idea. We'll just have to. We're just gonna play it by ear once once the race is under. Why? But medium for Verstappen, Bottas, and Gasly. The race of the top ten on softs. Perez and Leclerc both opting for the hard compound. Medium for Hamilton and Sainz. Soft for Sonoda and Joe. Then everyone else in medium, apart from Mazepin, also opt in for the hard tires. So a mix of strategy, mix of starting tires for today's race. But here we go then. The lights are on ahead of us. Five lights for the Singapore Grand Prix. They are out, and we are racing in Marina Bay. It's a good start for us, immediately cutting to the inside of the track to cover off Max Verstappen as we head towards the first corner of Verstappen, getting a bit twitchy there on the inside. Paul's going to lose out to Valtteri Bottas there, and I think he has Bottas pulled ahead of Verstappen, who stays ahead of Pierre Gasly. Lance Stroll is uh, trying to put pressure on the, um, I nearly said Canadian, on the Frenchman. Um, Ricardo and Alon Ricardo ahead of Alonso. Alonso trying to stay ahead of Lando Norris as um, they head on down. Alonso's at a decent start, um, but Norris is hanging it in there, trying to stay ahead, and he does not. Alonso ahead of Stroll of um, Norris. Ricardo's ahead of Stroll as uh, Giovinazzi and Hamilton close out the top ten. Um, Perez has lost a couple places. Leclerc has lost a place as well. With those hard compound tires, uh, not how working that well at the beginning. But our soft compound tires are working quite well. We've broken DRS, which is very, very handy. We need to just get out there and just push like crazy on this first stint. Because I don't know what strategy Bottas and Verstappen are doing. They're the main problems today. And on to lap six. Bottas has closed back up. It's been a bit of a scruffy couple laps for us here. But the tires are also maybe just starting to maybe give up a little bit. And we're going to come in at the end of this lap for our first pit stop of the race. A very awkward pit entry. We're very close to in the wall there. I hate the Singapore pit entry. Uh, but we've got a McLaren and a Ferrari in behind us. Also coming in. And it looks like a Mercedes I think might be in as well. I could be mistaken. That might be an Alpha Tauri. No, it's... Oh no, it's an Aston Martin. I was, I was completely wrong. And there's an Alpine that's in as well. We're in front of medium compound tires, back out into the pit lane, just ahead of Ricardo 
as it should be. And as we now exit the pit lane, we're going to rejoin the action just behind Callum Eilalt, our former teammate, I believe. Yes, we are. P15. And hopefully we can clear these back markers pretty rapidly. You know, because if there's one thing that real drivers are in this game are better than AI, it's cutting through the traffic. We've caught him at a, ever so slightly awkward place. We're not close enough to go for a move into this hairpin, unfortunately. So we have to sit in behind and just wait, just wait it out and just wait for the perfect moment to be close enough to be able to go for a move. And I want to try and go for that move soon because I don't, I cannot afford to get caught between Isla and Schumacher for too long as we try and go for a move. Can't quite do it. He goes back ahead. It's very, very close to contact there. We're going to have to sit in behind once again through this third sector, through this um, twisty tight third sector here. Um, I've tried to make moves there before, it's never normally ended well, but hopefully we're in a great position here as we head on now through the penultimate corner. We commit to make a bit of contact, we've got the move done. Schumacher's up next as there's more people into the pit lane, uh, which promotes us back up into a leave in the place. Liberty the track limits and hopefully we can clear Mick Schumacher very, very quickly. Uh, that's kind of the hope in the aim, but hope, uh, well, if I don't clear him quickly then what am I even doing? But we've got DRS on the house. Last time I had DRS on the house down this straight. My DRS got stuck open. That was last season, but no such problems. And that was on lap eight as well when that happened. I've gotten away with it this time. And Schumacher now under pressure from Ricardo through the penultimate corner. Ricardo getting past Schumacher the same way I got past Callum Islands. And Schumacher might lose out to Stroll even as they head down towards Terman the Canadian on the inside of the, of the German through the first few corners. Stroll's got the move done, and uh, we're going to stick with this for a little bit longer because Lando Norris is getting rather, rather racy behind him, and uh, maybe wanting to go for a move as well, doing this next nice DRS straight. Schumacher will have DRS, I think, as well. He does, but Norris has DRS and a bigger straight line speed advantage, more downforce, and ultimately it's the McLaren now up to 13th and the half, down to P14, and meanwhile back with us. We're in P10 here, chasing after Nicholas Latifi, in the other Williams, they've cleared one Williams, they have to clear another one. Um, bit of liberty to track limits there, but whatever. And we should hopefully be able to very carefully and easily clear Latifi down this straight. That was close to contact there with with, the, with his gearbox. Ricardo sets the fastest lap of the race behind us. We're up to ninth. Um, and making good progress as currently Bottas is leading, yet to stop. As is Verstappen in second and Gasly third, Hamilton fourth. Um, Science is currently in fifth, just behind him there. And we've got Perez on the hard compound tires, and Leclerc also, Schwartzman in eighth. Also, the, so the top eight have yet to make a pit stop in this race. We're the first of the folk have made a pit stop, then Ricardo closes it with top ten, and Latifi is under big pressure from Lando Norris, who has cleared him. But end of lap 12 here, and we have Falk in the pit lane. Our teammates, one of them, Hamilton. Schwartzman's in as well, Verstappen and Gasly are in as well. We go around the first corner and we are just back ahead of Verstappen. He so very nearly managed to, managed to be overcut there as uh, Jeff wanted to pit in for a second pit stop a lap later than was originally scheduled. But we've got the overcut done on Verstappen um, and he's on the medium compound tires. Gasly is onto the soft, so they're two stopping. As is Hamilton, all three of them are two stopping in this race. So that goes well for us. And it also means that if Verstappen's got medium tire, medium tire, he'll be on the soft for his final stint. So I think I might want to go onto the soft at the end of this race to stand the chance of still being competitive with these guys. Um, but we have a problem that Verstappen's just right ahead with on fresher medium compound tires, which is never a good thing. He's into the back of us. He's lost his front wing. Did we break him in too early there? I don't know. Uh, but he's under pressure. He's going to have to come into the pit lane now. As uh, Gasly maybe finds a chance to get past him there. Is this, I think he just didn't... I don't know. I think I maybe broke, broke a bit earlier than he anticipated. I, I don't know. Um, but either way, Bottas coming out of the pit lane there on medium tires. And again, we won't just get ahead when we're back up into third place. We're up into third place. Leclerc and, and Perez going much longer on this first stint. They're going to be two, they're going to be one stopping, I think, in this race. Um, but Bottas also 12 stopping. So the three that started in the top 10 on the mediums, all two stopping along with us. 
Verstappen's, I think, just had to make that second stop quite a bit earlier than he planned. Uh, but there's yellow flags behind us. I wonder if someone's gone slowly anyways. There's Hamilton and Sainz. They're both back there. So I wonder which one of them's hitting issues. We're under pressure from Bottas here down this main straight. And we're going to get him back into the first corner to defend our position. A bit, few liberties of the track limits there. Um, but Hamilton is uh, not a Red Bull driver. He's out of the race with yellow flags up ahead of us as well. Someone's having issues ahead of us. with either Perez or Leclerc. One of them is having problems. And the safety car has now been deployed. Oh, look at the timing screen. Leclerc is dropping down. Leclerc, oh, what bad luck for him. Second race in a row and Leclerc is out from a mechanical failure. That's two mechanical failures in a row for a driver who's seen as the best durability department on the grid. A terrible luck for him, but the safety car is coming in at the end. Lap 18 here. We're in the lead because Perez went in for his first and only pit stop of the race. He, he can go to the end, so... And the three ahead of us as we get underway, the two behind us and ourselves, we all have to make another pit stop. Sainz is in third, Bottas second, Perez fourth, Zenoda is in fifth. Perez is the only one in the top five who can go to the end, I believe, on these tyres. Uh, but we've had a safe restart. For once, we had a good restart because we were fucking controlling the damn thing. But we've had a good restart. We've not managed to... We've not, we've not caught Bottas napping. But we, we've not had an absolute shocker of a restart like we normally have on this game. Although, to be honest, the safety car restarts are only a lot harder when you're in the middle of the pack. I'm going to be perfectly honest. And they're even worse than Trifle like Monaco in the middle of the pack. Uh, but anyway, as I said, we're leading from Bottas, Sainz, Perez, Sonoda, Gasly, just ahead of George Russell. And then we've Robert Schwartzman, Lando Norris, and Max Verstappen, who can also go to the end. A lot of us in the top 10 have to pit again as does Valtteri. Bottas into the back of us! He made the same mistake that, that Verstappen did, which means the safety car is back out for a second time. And we're going to dive into the pit lane. Carlos continues on. As does Perez. So Carlos takes the lead. Perez is net P1. He can go to the end. We're gonna go on to the Souls compound tires for the remainder of this race. Alpha Taria double stacking. Baltas is of course back in. We have light side pod damage, which that's just fantastic. Um, Alpha Romeo are also double stacking there. Um, as we will rejoin the action in P14. Um, this race is going to appear a bit rang, but these things happen sometimes. But anyway, lap 21, the safety car is coming in. We're getting ready to gear up for the restart. We should hopefully be able to get the jump on Ilog fairly quickly here on the restart. As I was a bit cautious there. Uh, not the best restart from us and we're under pressure. We're going to have to go defense into the inside from George Russell. As we dive it down the inside and get past um, the Williams. And now we're going to look to go around the outside of Mick Schumacher as well. To try and capitalize on these soft compound tires and get the moves done. We've got the move done, we've got about two cars already. We have uh, S1 Alcon, I believe, just in front of us. I think it's Alcon. I might be wrong. It is Alcon. S1 Alcon just ahead of us. We're looking to get past him fairly rapidly. Can't do anything into turn seven. We can set up the lovely for turn eight, where we're going to dive down the inside as we have many times before. And that's P11 for the taking. Um, as we carve our way through, we start to carve our way through this traffic. And get up the order. We cannot waste time here. We have got to make the moves and make them when we can. We go for another opportunity there. Bit of contact made with Latifi there. Brilliant. Um, as Stroll is the driver up next. Carving our way through this slower traffic that's on medium compound tires. Mediums and hards. The slower tire, maybe a bit of an older tire. I don't know. Um, but on Stroll, we're going to send it. We're going to finally have to make a move at the hairpin. We send it down the inside. Moved on up to ninth place. Giovinazzi should hopefully be easy picking down this straight with using DRS and a bit of ERS as well to help us out in getting past the Italian in the uh, French team car as he defended the inside. We go to the outside, we dance around the outside on the curb, moved on, sorted. Now it's our former teammate up next as Science is back in. Schwartzman is also into the pit lane. On this lap, which means that Sergio Perez now leads away on the Grand Prix. Landon Norris is up to second. Jeff seems to think we're pissing here, and we're not. 
And then after Norris, it's said Verstappen, then Ricardo Alonso, then ourselves. P P3, maybe P2 is definitely possible as things stand at the moment. Uh, but we can't, it, it won't be possible if we get held up a ton. Which is what we're currently doing right now. We're going to rectify that by going round the outside of Alonso who locks up. And that is job done, moved on, up into the top, up back into the top five in this race. Dan and Ricardo's up next for the last of the light breakers. Can we break later than him? Um, we're gonna definitely try as we dive in down the inside P4 for the take a bit unstable on the rear. As that was a lovely overtake there. Right, we've looked at the gearbox issue, but I'm afraid there's nothing we can do. Try and drive around it, we'll just have to hope for the best. Remember that you have a lot of torque in these power units, so you should be able to stay in higher gears for a lot of the lap. Well, thanks for the vote of confidence, Jeff. Hello, Gearbox problems, my old friend. Oh, how wonderful it is to see you again. Having a Gearbox issues for a while, but on to lap 29, we're still in P4 chasing Air Max. We've gone purple in the first sector. The Gearbox has sorted itself out. Thankfully, Norris has run away with P2. But so I'm, I'm looking at P3 is the best we can do. And P3 is definitely possible as we head on to the penultimate lap of the race. It's hard tires. It's old hards against fresh softs. We should hopefully be able to get this move done as we've closed up beautifully. We're going to have DRS and all the ERS in the world to play with. As we head on to the DRS tray, opening it up. In the rear wing. Opening up behind us as we now charge our way down to turn 10. We dive it down the inside and moved on we're back up into the podium positions at p3 for the taking for sap and gonna have to sell for p4 um as i said norris freaking ran away with p2 perez ran away with the front he is really woken up now hasn't he um as we go a little bit deep there and for sap and fancy the chances are move but we cover that off as perez has won the Grand Prix from uh, 11th on the grid, might I mention. My God, what a drive. He has woken up to this championship fight. Um, and Norris is second. We're going to come home then for uh, P3 in the end of it. Um, I, I can't really be that too happy because we started from pole. It kind of went just a period bit wrong for us there today. Um, but I mean, you live and you learn, Perez, driver of the day, he won from 11th, I absolutely agree with that vote game. Nice one. It was a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today. Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. What set them apart from the rest? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralized. I mean, do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently. It's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be proud of the victory they secured here. So we're going to go from Mercedes domination to Red Bull domination. I mean, it's not Mercedes, but I rather want to get up into that fight. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I can't really be too happy with the result today. It's still a podium, but considering we start on pole, I can't really be too happy about it. Because we could have and should have won that race, but it just went a period bit wrong for us today. Um, Carlos, in the end, gets the fastest lap, but finishes in P12 outside the points, unfortunately. Very close to the points. Um, and Sonoda had a five-second time penalty. For, I, I never noticed that before. But Leclerc out for the second race in a row with mechanical issues. The team with the best durability department on the grid suffering some issues with their number, with their main man there. But Perez... And Verstappen got the one and two in the championship. We overtake Hamilton. Um, we've closed up. We're 21 points behind Bottas, who finished outside of the points. Uh, there wasn't any Mercedes cars in the points today. Um, so we overtake one Mercedes. We close up to the other. We're 33 points down on, on Perez. Verstappen seven points back in second. They've woken up to this championship fight is on. Um, but there's still, um, four races to go after this. Circuit of the Americas, Mexico, Brazil, and then Abu Dhabi, which I'm still convinced is against my better judgment for putting on the calendar. But it's fine. Season four, I don't have to do Abu Dhabi anymore. I can end the season 
with Jed. I refuse to end it on Brazil because ending the season on a night ra on a daytime race just doesn't feel right to me. Ending it the season on a nighttime race just feels so much more complete to me. I don't know why. There's the unpopular opinion for the day. I do not think the F1 season should end in Brazil. I am not on that bandwagon. There is my unpopular opinion, but anyway, Brazil's not next time. It's Circuit of the Americas, and we're gonna have to take a gearbox penalty. There's a surprise, but for now, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.